All right, everyone. I've been like senior without a hat for a long time. All right, everyone. We are going to start our lesson with a bit of a discussion. Everyone have their formula sheets. At least most people have their formula sheets in front of them. Please take a look at the back of your formula sheet where it starts talking about volume. That's today's lesson. And depending on how well you followed yesterday's lesson on compositions, this may or may not make sense to you. And I hope everyone at the end of the day will come to appreciate this formula. Let's talk. What is the volume of a cylinder? And the main question for today, why is it that way? Because there is no possible way some dude or some person decided to make this equation up and then be like, oh, look, I made a connection. I discovered it. No, there was a logical reason why the formula is the formula. So let's put it on the board. What is the formula? Someone with the sheet in front of them. What is the formula for a cylinder? And by cylinder, I mean something that looks like, one second, let's see if I can do this properly. Looks like... Yeah. It's like this, right? I'm wondering if you can uh, see. You know what? Let me try to let me try to work my Zoom artistic skills. Make it like that. Does that make sense? Does that sort of look like a 3D? Is that okay? Yes. All right. Let's work with that. All right. Um, what is the formula again? So the volume is area of base and type. What does that mean? So give me the actual formula then. Yeah, for the cylinder. It's literally just as area of base times height. I thought it actually gave you. No, there will be five times base squared times height. Right. So V is equal to pi r squared height. Why? Why? Why does that? Why does that make sense? Where's the logic of it? I wonder how many people actually picked that up. That's correct, Andrew. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's, it's many, 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 many. This is the logic behind it. And this logic applies to all the other shapes too, like a rectangular prism, like a triangular prism, like a Toblerone bar, okay? It applies to every single thing. Here is the logic behind these equations. And it's not just made up. If I had a piece of paper, and I cut a circle and I placed it on the table. Is that 2D or is that 3D? 3D. 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 No, because it's it's no, it no, debatable. No. You know what? No, no, no. It's debatable. You're right. You can technically say there is a certain thickness, right? Of course, it's slightly higher. But here's the thing. Is this height? Worth calculate. Mm, maybe, maybe not. So that's what I mean. So the idea behind 2D versus 3D, the height is so small, it's essentially zero. Almost zero. Is it zero? No, of course not. But it's almost zero is to the point where because the height is not in the picture, we call it a two-dimensional shape. But if I take another circle and put it right on top of it, and then I take another circle and I put it right on top of it, and then I put it right on top of it, all of a sudden it goes from a 2D world and enters a 3D world. So my question to you is this, if you had, let's pretend the area is equal to 10. How many of these circles do you have? 
Well, typically, wouldn't you multiply by the number of circles, right? It's sort of like, if you, essentially that's what it is, right? You would multiply by how high it goes. And essentially that is always going to be the case. In the simplest form, the best way I can describe any of these volume formulas is is taking area and doing something else with it. So that is why when you're in elementary school, we first talk about 2D, because if you understand all the formulas in 2D, all we're adding is another dimension to it, which is multiplying. So in the same way, let me try to connect it with the equation that you are very familiar with. What about cubes? A cube is going to be, Let's pretend all of these are the same sides. What is the volume of a cube? Well, it's length times width times height, or in a specific way, cube is side times side times side because they're all the same. Well, yes, same word, same concept. Right? So here is where this comes from. What is the area of a flat sheet of square paper? Length times width. And if I have another stack of paper, another stack, and if I keep on placing stacks of these square pieces of paper until I start gaining a height, well, it's the area multiplied by every single time. So without looking at the formula, don't look at the formula, don't look at the formula sheet. What if I gave you a triangular base prism? So, so what's the area of a triangle? Base times height, so this base, right? Times the height divided by two and then multiplied by this height. So you have to be sure not to confuse those two heights. So because we don't want to confuse the two heights, if you look at the sheet, take a look. Instead of calling that a height, we call it a length. So the equation suddenly changes, right? Let me try this once again. Normally, a triangle, we call this base times height divided by two. But if we are talking about a triangle in a 3D shape, this is, we still call it a base. That dotted line is now this. Instead of calling it a height, we call we end up calling it a length. I don't know. And then now, because we're talking about a prism, that's my height. It's so hard to memorize equations, but if you understand the concept of a volume, that it's simply area times the height, the area times the height, the area times the height, it gives you more clues as to what numbers go in with. That's today's lesson. To be able to talk about volume of not only normal 3D shape, but also volume of complicated shapes and composite shapes and put them together. Abby and then to you. Very good question. The next question is, what about a pyramid? What the heck is that? Am I adding a square every single time? Sort of. What kind of, what's so different about this one compared to the other ones? Hmm? The square that we are adding gets smaller and smaller. And because the side length of this square gets smaller and smaller, there's a rate of change to the area of the square. That's what we call calculus. Calculus is being able to add things or calculate volume, for example, what is this? If this was, if this square was not changing, this shape would be a rectangular prism. So it's basically length times width times height, but, or rather, sorry, side times side times height, it's the square. This side square times height 
this side is continually changing. There's a rate of change to the sun. And hence, everyone who did a mathematician that did calculus, that's what it is. How do you calculate something when the number that we're dealing with is constantly changing? That's grade 12 stuff. So we have to wait for that. But it's a really good question. And since we can't quite handle grade 12 math yet, shapes like this, maybe it's a good idea to just, just look at the formula sheet, right? And I probably won't give you too many difficult, crazy, challenging questions based on a pyramid, but I could give you challenging questions based on a cube or a cylinder, because those follow that previous pattern of area times the height. Yes? I know this is uh, a question, maybe I just feel but Yeah, well, that is a field of mathematics. Yes, the fourth dimension is applied for sure. And there are systems that we have, this, uh, we have developed to show on a graph, for example, multiple fourth dimensions. So, so if, if, um, if length is the first dimension, it would be the second, technically third, or would be the fourth? Time. Uh, it, it's sort of like calculus. Here's an example. And again, I'm wasting time here, but I think it's a very good question. Pretend we're talking about a, uh, a gigantic hourglass where there's a little tiny hole, right? And it's sprinkling sand onto a pile. As time passes, does the size of that pile stay the same? No, it grows. No. So if I were to talk about this pile of sand in the fourth dimension, you would have to be able to visualize that this cone, this pile of sand, gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And how do we deal with that in a 3D world? Well, so we have to develop a slightly different system. So we take... Remember how Cartesian coordinates are in the X and Y? Even here, you don't have to go too far. How do I turn this into a three-dimensional Cartesian? We got length, we got width. How do we get, as Abby said, depth? On a piece of paper, we draw the third axis popping out of the paper and going back. This is the world of vectors and you learn it in grade 12. No. But once we start exploring 3D, you will learn calculus vectors and then integrals, which is the next step, which will allow you to talk about a change in something and take this 3D and turn it into 4D. Vector has to do with direction and quantity. So wind is pushing, let's say 60 kilometers per hour in the right direction versus the left direction, blah, blah, blah. It's, 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 vectors is exploring the 3D world. You don't have to worry too much. As much as I would love to talk more about it, a handful of people will not be interested and I want to move on to today's lesson. So. My sister's running that um, what? Um, you're still like very advanced. It's like the super nerds. <laughs> very interested students, okay? Not nerds. I was a nerd. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a huge nerd. All right, everyone. Let's do this quickly. Here. Yeah. We'll do this quickly. Starting with some of the easier examples, for example, A and C. I'm hoping that you'll be able to calculate the volume without looking at the formula, knowing that it is the area of the face times the, the length or the height. All right, so let's take a look. I am going to, since we were talking about three dimension, I am going to pretend that, I need my highlighter, I need my highlighter. I'm gonna pretend that this is my face. And I will calculate the area of this 
And then pretend that this flat pink sheet is stacked on top of each other until I get 15 millimeters in, in height. I am not, I'm gonna do my best not to look at the formula because I can use my brain for this. Volume is, as the question says, or as a formula sheet says, area times height. What is an area of a rectangle? Length times width. You know this. You've been drilled this. And I hope you see how, in some cases, drilling has its benefits. It's not drilled to kill anymore, right? Um, I think in elementary school, there was this fad where there was this like quote, where it's like, oh, let's not drill to kill. We're killing the students. Let's not drill to kill. And then all of a sudden, everybody's math skills went down. And now you know how they changed the phrase? They went from drill to kill to drill for skill. They went completely the other way. And to me, as a mathematician, when I first said drill to kill, I'm just like, no, drilling is also very important. It's not the only thing, but it is important. And now everyone realizes, oh, that, we had it wrong. We got to go the opposite way. Now they're going way on the other side and drilling to the point where you don't understand why you're doing it in the first place. You need a bit of both. Okay. Well, they should be. It's important. Okay. Area. 55 is here. 70 is there. So 55 times 70 times 15. And if I work that in the calculator, I'll do that for us. You can just copy. Because, oh, you already got it. Okay. Uh, 57,750. My units is? Centimeters. Perfect. Wow, Angus. So angry. Stop. It will be because if you think about it, I take 55 millimeters, multiply by another millimeters, multiply by another millimeters. What is something multiplied by itself three times? Exponent of three. So it's cute. Okay, to you. Chill. Let's move on. In the same area, everyone, in the same breath, one second, would you be able to use that same idea? Don't look at the formula sheet and know that the volume of a normal 3D shape is the area of the face time the height. In this case, it's a little bit different. The area of the face is this part right here. It's not on top, right? And this is like that. If you are if you are the type that sort of cooks, right? Me, for example, going back to my Korean roots, if I make like um, you know, like sushi or rolls or whatever, to me that would this made a lot of sense because if you cut it, every single piece is exactly the same, right? You wouldn't cut a hot dog in the long way because every time you cut it, the shape would be a little different. So if you have a, a hot dog or a sausage or whatever, and you cut each piece and diced it, every single slice will be different. That is the face you are looking for. If you have that in mind, maybe you will remember that the face I'm talking about is not a rectangle, it's the, it's the triangle portion. Yes? Again, it's just a formula. So in this case, yeah. If, you, if, it's, if you're a little facetious about it, if you're a little bit detail oriented, maybe you wanna say this, this time the volume is area times length, but the idea is still the same. This is why you need to be able to think for yourself. Just because it has height doesn't mean you put in a three. You are looking for the, the extended distance of that face. So in this case, it's the area of a triangle. This is base times height divided by a two, and then you multiply by the length, as Theo is saying. So that would be a four, 12, 12 times 12, 144 centimeters cubed. Good. Thank you. 
that would be what we call surface area. So we can talk about area of a 3D shape, but we call it a different word. It's called surface area. Yeah, so we'll get there. Um, for a pyramid, um, there's no way for me to derive it well for you, but long story short, the volume is going to follow the formula base squared times height over three. So the formula, the best way I would have written it is, you know, base squared times height, but it's divided by three, right? Think about it once again, the base is right here. And what would the volume of a rectangular prism be? It would be the area of the base times the height. That's this part right there. But length times width, right? Times the height. It would have been like this. But as we go up, it gets thinner and thinner and thinner. How much do we lose as we go up and get thinner and thinner? Two thirds is lost. And it's like perfectly two thirds is lost. And you can find that using calculus. You don't have to worry. And so that's why we multiply it by one over three. Yes. Every time. That's why it's a formula. <laughs> Area base. Yeah. So the answer would be uh, one third times the area of the base, which is six times six, times the height, which is oh, oh, I got you. Who wrote 12? Who wrote 12? I did not rip roll you. Oh, troll, maybe. What is the height? Uh, yeah, they oh, give you the slant. Well, it's not, no, it's not a slant. What is it? It's not a half. What is it? It's not a half. The slant is a 12. It's, 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 this is what we have right here. Yes, we got it. Square plus yeah. three squared equals. Yeah. Let me zoom in, everyone. I, I need to. I need to get close in. Everyone, do you see this? The height we need. Look carefully at the formula sheet. The height that we need goes from the top corner, the apex of this pyramid, all the way to the center of the base. How do you get that? Here's how you do. As Finn was saying, you can pretend. Because the apex is right at the vertical of the entire floor, you could pretend that this is a 90 degree triangle with a slant or hypotenuse of 12 and a base length of three. Hence, who cares if you have a formula, you need to be able to think for yourself. Yes, Andrew. That side? What do you mean? Oh, you mean the three? You mean? No, I mean the height. Well, that's why. Remember, yesterday we started the lesson with Pythagorean theorem. I don't tell you that you have to use it, but if it's useful, I expect you to use it. What is Pythagorean theorem? One side squared plus the other side squared equals the hypotenuse squared. That is h squared plus three squared equals 12 squared. Or h squared plus nine equals 144. Let's continue. h squared is 144 minus four. The three is right here. It's, the, it's one of the side lengths. No, the full length is a six. Remember, the vertical is right at the center of the pyramid. It's going to be perfectly half, correct? So um, let's do it as a decimal, please. What is the height? Give me two decimals, maybe, just to be safe. How much is square root? It is 11 point something. How do you do that? 
Yes. Oh, really? Okay. Everyone, please pay attention. We did this yesterday. If you want to get rid of a square, you have to do a square root. You have to do the root. So h is equal to the root of 135, which is about good. Rounded. Oh, 6, 2. Let's do rounded. 6, 2. So now that I have the height, going back to the formula, volume is one third base squared height, which is one over three, six squared, 11.62. Assuming you're doing your calculations correctly, the final answer is 139. Uh, I don't know about that one. No, no, it's you don't square 36. It's six times six. So which is six squared? Divided by a three times eleven point six two. Try it out. Yes. Where? Which part? Which part? This one? Yeah. Okay, so when I square root 135, which means if I want to get 135, I have to multiply 11.62 with itself. That's what square root means. So if I have h squared is 135, then h must be 11.62. So you want to get rid of the square? But that's, that's all it is. Every time you see a square and you want to get rid of a square, let me backtrack. If you have an addition in algebra, how do you get rid of an addition? If there's a multiplication, divide. If you have a square, square root. So anytime you do that, you do this on both sides. You have 11.62. The height is 11.62. You can plug it in. Yes. Well, yes, that's what that's what I know. B, the B value is six. So this is B squared. It's six squared. Um, mm, no, that's not where we were going. So the B value is squared. So six is squared. And then the H value is just multiplying afterwards. So it's 11.62 is multiplied afterwards. Hmm? Yep. 1 over 3 times 36 times 11.62. And since this is in meters, this will be meters cubed. To finish off today, we're going to finish off pretty early. I'm going to introduce the word capacity, which is a, just a special word for volume. It's nothing special. Yeah. You would be correct in real life, but I am not going to specify thickness of a shell. Um, that would be like a T question. Yes, uh, I grew up with. But for our grade nine level, you won't have to worry about it anytime soon, especially for our mini homework quiz on Thursday. Yes. Oh, uh, I will, it's because I didn't round this number. You're right, four, three, four, four. I will accept both. All right, let's move on. We're making good time, people. So thank you. Capacity. Everyone? Yeah. Capacity is basically another word for volume. You don't have to worry about too much, except Certain questions will ask you to take the dimensions and convert it to liquid. 
So here's a conversion. I'll do one example for you to show you why you might need to do both. Because anytime we talk about the volume of a container, do we care about the actual centimeter cube dimensions? Sometimes, but mostly we want a container because we want to fill it with something. So we usually talk about it in terms of milliliters or liters. And liters, obviously, is a 3D unit. Are you going to count liters of a puddle of water on the floor? No, you would count liters of a container. So they are connected to each other. Here we go. The blank is called capacity. Capacity is the maximum volume of a, con a container can hold. It's usually expressed in liters, but it could be in milliliters, and you need to be able to tell the difference. So take a look. Determine the capacity of the following can. I'm going to be very quick in saying this is the volume. That would be pi r squared height. I also know that the radius is going to be 7 divided by 2, so the diameter divided by 2. Putting that together, volume is pi 3.5 squared. 11.5. I'm not going to insult your intelligence. I know that you can piece it all together. So I will do this for you. And I'm not rounding pi. 442.571867. I will just round it to this. This is centimeters cubed. However, please remember that if we are talking about capacity, it is most appropriate to convert it into milliliters or meters. No, three point five square. Oh, let's remember. And of course, um, if you understand the concept of plugging in numbers for volume, you can always plug in volume to find the other numbers. You could be going in reverse. Consider this example two: a rectangular prism has a capacity of 2.5 liters. Determine its height if the base is 10 by 10 square centimeters. So some of you are still copying, so I will bring this up. But everyone else, I'd like you to look at the next question. What's the problem? Oh. Yeah, well, yeah, but like, what's the issue here? Why, why is it hard? Yes. That's the whole point of the question, yes. But um, it's base. I'm a visual. I need to draw it all the time. The base is 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. But volume is in liters. What's the disconnect? So change it to the same units, I guess. Look at your sheet. What is one liter equal to? So convert it. How did you do that? Is it though? Sometimes the units might be difficult. So I'm going to give you a unit conversion using ratios. Yay, ratios. Everyone loves ratios, right, Pigsley? I know you, you're smiling because you know you love ratios. Take a look, everyone. At the top of your sheet, they gave you the ratio. One liter is to 1,000 centimeter cubed. So what is 2.5 liters to X centimeter cubed? Ratios. Figure it out. You know what? Let's 
flip it so that I have X on top. 1,000 centimeter cubed is to one liter, as is X centimeter cubed is to 2.5 liters. Get X all alone, please. Yeah. Unit conversion! Yay! Yay. <laughs> I hate you guys. <laughs> um, I've been going back to this idea. I want X all alone, right? And so I, I, don't, want, I don't want this 2.5. I want to get rid of a division of 2.5. So how do I get rid of a division of 2.5? We're multiplying both sides by 2.5. Yes. 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 But we are not going to worry ourselves with anything other than the, the three decimal places at a time. So volume is equal to length times width times height. That means 2,500 centimeters cubed is equal to 10 by 10 by height. You would not be plugging in the correct number if you didn't do the unit conversion. So please be careful. 2,500 is equal to 100 times H. How do I get H all alone? Divide by 25. Therefore, height equals 25 centimeters, bam. This is my challenge for you for the next five minutes. I will take it up after I give you a chance. If you can do this, I think you are very well prepared for your quiz. I'll say it once again. The final example I give you, if you can do this, you are very well prepared for your quiz, at least in terms of volume. This quiz is basically a homework check quiz. It's basically a homework check, but that's worth marks. Please take a look at the final example here. Climatologists are forecasting a drought and the mayor of the town wants to know how much water this water tower can hold when it's full. Go. You don't have to do a conversion. This is in feet, so don't worry about it. I am okay with leaving it in feet. You can do feet cubed as a, a unit of the volume of water. I want to know, I'll say it over time, I want to know how much water fits in this shape. You, you do it, you do it. I'm going to give everyone five minutes. Hint, I am looking for the capacity of this shape. And this shape is not a regular shape. What would you break down this shape into? Not a triangle, but a compound. So there it is. There's your hint. I am going to pause and give you five minutes. OK. Um, so my approach, again, when I see weird shapes like this, I'm going to try to simplify it for myself. There's no way I'm going to deal with all of this at once. I don't have time for that. And I have easier ways of using my past knowledge for this. I am going to break this down into two shapes. I'm going to call the first one one and the second one two. The first one is a normal cone with a radius of 16 and a slant of 20. That's all they give you. I also know that for a cone, the formula for the volume is uh, not one third. Is it one third? It is one third. My bad. One third times a cylinder. Did everyone notice the formula for a, for a cone was very similar to something else? What was it similar to? Hmm? To the, yes, to a cylinder. Very similar also to our example. Do you remember when we had a pyramid?
What was the formula for a pyramid? It was whatever the volume of these uh, of the rectangle was, right? It was base times base times height, and then one over three. Same thing. If we had a regular cylinder, it would be pi uh, pi r squared height. But since the tip is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, the volume is exactly one third of it. I don't know. Coincidence? Probably not. Anyways, let's get to it. Volume is one over three. Pi r is 16 squared times not 20. Hmm? I, I don't have the height yet. Remember. Nope. It's Pythagorean theorem again. Well, yes, if that's A, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So A squared plus, ooh, 225. Oh, I see. Ah, I see, I see. So that would be 144. Square root, which is 12. So if I were to plug it in, everyone, it's not a 20. Careful, it's a 12. So the final volume is. Did you round the pi? Okay. Good. This is feet cubed. Next, number two is a little easier. Shape number two is a normal cylinder. And it gives me the height, which is 30. It gives me the radius, which is 16. Volume is pi r squared height. Pi r squared height. Whoa. Did I do that right? Uh, I don't think it's two million. No, oh, yeah, twenty four thousand one hundred twenty seven and forty three. So together, V total is V of the first shape plus the V of the second shape, which is this big number plus 3,217. This is approximately two, seven, three, four, 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 three feet cubed. Honestly speaking though, from a teacher's perspective, I'm more excited if you notice how the one third aspect that will apply to the pyramid also apply to the cone. If you do this, if I cover the one third, what is that the formula of? A, a cylinder. cylinder. Yeah. This is a cylinder, but it's tapering off like a pyramid. So just like the pyramid, when it was one third, a rectangular prism, a cone is one third, a cylindrical prism. Yes. No. I am okay with you leaving it as feet. For the for the quiz, I'll give it to you in metrics, like meters. No, no, no. Don't worry about it. It's it's gonna be centimeters, liters, milliliters. If I do give you to you in meters, um, well, we'll worry about it then. Don't worry. Yes. Any questions? All right. Yes. Times thirty times sixty-five. I got this. 
So 16 times 16 times 30 times 30. Yep, 7,680 times pi. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. There's discrepancy. It's because um, I didn't use, I didn't round. I used the actual button. So you use all of it. So there will be small discrepancies. Good point, everyone. Because I don't know whether you're using the pi button or you're just using 3.14, I need you to show me all your work. If you use 3.14, this becomes 24115. That's how big of a difference this can make. So show me all your work and show me if you're using 3.14 or if you're using the actual pi button. It's really important. Because if I see certain number changes and I don't see your work, I'm like, well, you got it wrong. Very important that you show me your work. Yes. So where's the final? Oh, right here. So V total is the first volume plus the second volume. This would be the final volume. And your final volume will be a little different because of the change in your pi. Yes. So you use the can you can do both as long as you show your work. Showing your work is the most important. Because because I'm brilliant, I will be able to see it. I will know. No, I, I need to see that you understand where pi was used. I need to see like all of this and then go to the, if you go from here and this number is slightly different, I'll be okay. Yeah, I would know. I would know. Okay. Oh, you have some good questions. <laughs>